Hello, I'm doing a movie review, and the movie I want to review is the 1977 Japanese film House, not to be confused with the American horror film of the same name, which came out nine years later. That is a completely different movie from this. Now, I actually did do a review of this movie a number of years ago, but I wanted to redo it because I think my opinions on this film have definitely matured over the years, and in my old review, I did like the movie, but I feel like I was just sort of talking about that movie like it was weird for weird's sake, and it certainly is, but I do feel like there are some definite deeper themes at work in this movie, especially after watching the documentary that's on this DVD called Constructing a House. And also, I feel like my overall style of reviewing has certainly improved in the years since I did that original review. Now, House is a comic horror fantasy film about a girl named Gorgeous who, after getting into a fight with her father because her father is getting married to another woman, her mother died eight years prior to the events of this movie, and she's all pissed at her father, so she decides to spend the summer at her aunt's house, and she decides to invite her six friends. All of them also have really interesting names. You have Prof, who is sort of like the nerd of the group. You have Melody, who is very musically talented. You have Kung Fu, who knows Kung Fu. You have Sweet, who is a very sweet person. You have Mac, who likes to eat a lot. And you have Fantasy, who likes to daydream a lot. So, these girls go to Gorgeous's aunt's house, and they discover that the house is haunted, and Gorgeous's aunt is... You're not really sure if she's, like, a ghost or some kind of a witch. It even implies at one point that she might even be a vampire. But basically, she's some kind of supernatural being, and the house is alive, and it literally starts to eat the girls one by one. And believe me, that plot description doesn't even begin to scratch the surface of just how bizarre this movie really is. Now, on the back of the DVD here, it describes the film as what if Mario Bava directed a Scooby-Doo episode, and I don't think that's a bad description. I've also heard the film described as Scooby-Doo meets the Evil Dead, even though this film came out a few years prior to Evil Dead. I don't think that's a bad description either. Now, I listened to this podcast called The Projection Booth, and they did an episode on this movie, and one of the guest hosts of that episode described this film as a horror movie set in the universe of a commercial, and I think that's a very apt description, especially because so much of this movie is intentionally artificial, and even the way some of the characters act, you could totally see this movie as sort of being in the universe that a lot of commercials inhabit. Now, the director of this movie, Nobaihiko Obayashi, I have no idea if I'm saying his name right, but but he actually did a lot of commercials before this movie. Now, the history of this film is actually quite interesting. The movie was produced and distributed by Japanese film company Toho, who here in the States are perhaps most famous as the company that produced all the Godzilla movies and many of Akira Kurosawa's films. And basically, after the massive success in America of Steven Spielberg's Jaws, Toho wanted to do a movie similar to Jaws, so they approached Obayashi to give them a movie like Jaws. They essentially wanted him to do a Jaws ripoff, and he gave them this movie instead. He was supposed to do a Jaws ripoff, but instead he did a Haunted House movie. They must have been pissed. They must have been like, we wanted a Jaws ripoff, you jackass. Now, actually, the film didn't immediately get made. Like, he had the script written, and the script was actually co-written by his daughter, who at the time was only 10 years old. That is also amazing to me. And the script was written, and Toho approved it, but he couldn't find a director to direct the movie, and he had, like, a novelization made of this movie, and a manga made, and he also released the soundtrack before the film was even made. 
And when he couldn't find a director who was on Toho's staff to direct the film, he decided to direct it himself, and Toho was not happy about that because apparently there was some rule that only directors on their staff could actually direct movie their movies. But the whole backstory on how this movie got made really is kind of amazing because to a certain extent, Obayashi kind of pressured Toho into allowing him to direct this movie. First of all, sorry about the dramatic change in lighting. I'm recording this part of the video later in the day. Now, to call House a bizarre movie would be an understatement. This is one of the weirdest freaking films I've ever seen in my life. The only film that sort of surpasses this in terms of weirdness is something like Jodorowsky's The Holy Mountain, although you could argue that this might even be weirder than that movie. And a lot of the film I would definitely say is probably just weird for weird's sake. However, there are some deeper themes in the film, which I am going to touch on in in a little bit, but overall I feel like it's sort of a mix. Like, some of it is definitely trying to make a point, and some of it I think was just style for style's sake, and weird for weird's sake. Now, you have a scene in this movie where a girl is eaten by a piano, and given what the characters' names are, and what their character traits are, you could probably already guess which girl it is who gets eaten by the piano. You also have a girl who gets eaten by mattresses, and later on, her soul appears inside a clock, and it's actually a really creepy scene where you see her ghost inside the clock. Uh, you have, like, a cat painting that's spewing acid out of its mouth. One of the girls, her head gets cut off, and her severed head ends up attacking one of the other girls and biting her on the ass. And then that girl's head ends up getting turned into a watermelon. You have a weird skeleton that's dancing. There's a minor character in the film who ends up getting turned into a pile of bananas by the end of the film. And I'm just describing the stuff that's brought about because of the supernatural stuff in this film. Even before they get to the haunted house, it's already clear this is not set in any sort of reality. This is clearly not set in our world. Like, there's a minor character in the film named Mr. Togo, who is the girl's school teacher and towards the beginning of this film, there's a scene where he gets up in the morning and he all of a sudden falls down a flight of stairs and his ass gets stuck in a bucket and he almost gets hit by a car, but it's all like it's a cartoon or something, and you could even look at this film as being like a horror movie set in the universe of a cartoon because it almost feels like a live-action cartoon, and there are actually some sequences of animation in this film Film as well. And I gotta mention the character of Mr. Togo because there's this whole subplot in the film where he's actually trying to get out to this house to join the girls and I'm like, wait a minute, he's their teacher and I think they're, these characters are supposed to be in high school? What the hell is the high school teacher doing trying to spend summer vacation with a bunch of teenage girls? But during this whole subplot of him trying to get to the house, it cuts to him, like, in traffic, and him, like, at this noodle shop, where one of the chefs at the noodle shop is actually a bear. Once again, it's just such a bizarre movie. But one thing that's definitely to be admired about this film is, this movie uses just about every filmmaking technique you can think of. And even if you think the movie is just weird for weird sake, I'll fight anybody who says that there's not artistry in this film. And the movie also sort of defies genre because it is a horror film, but it's also very much a fantasy film. It's a surrealist film. It's a comedy. It's sort of a teen melodrama. There are even points in the movie where it feels like a kid's film, and that's where you could definitely tell this was co-written by a 10-year-old. But then again, even though it feels like a kid's film, there's also some nudity in the film, so it's hard to say who this film is really made for exactly, even though the director claims that this was made for his daughter and made for people his daughter's age. There are points in this movie where it feels like a music video. At one point, it even becomes a silent film when a certain character's backstory is being explained. 
Like, the film is just insane, not just because of what happens in the film, but also because of the way the movie is made and all the different filmmaking techniques that are used for this film. Now, as weird and bizarre as this film is, as I pointed out before, I do think there are some definite deeper themes that work in this film, and a lot of the deeper themes of this film, I would say, have to do with World War II. At a certain point in this movie, the ant's backstory is explained and you find out that her fiance was drafted into the Japanese army during the Second World War and he promised that he'll return to her and she promised that she'll wait for him forever. And he ended up getting killed in the war but she continued to wait for him even after death. So while the film is bizarre, and it is definitely very goofy, there is sort of this underlying seriousness about the film. And in a lot of ways, the Ant's backstory, which ties into the main story of the film, is really a story about love and loss and the effects of World War II on Japan. And in a lot of ways, the girls in this movie, they're taking these peace times that they're growing up in for granted, and they're also taking for granted granted the suffering that the previous generation had to endure because of the war. For example, during the part of this movie where the ant's backstory is explained, there's a certain point where you see the atomic bombing of Hiroshima and one of the girls says that the mushroom cloud looks like cotton candy. So it's sort of showing how the current generation is sort of trivializing and taking for granted the suffering and the tragedies of the generation before them. And Obayashi, he actually lived in Hiroshima and all of his childhood friends died because of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima. But once again, House is a brilliant film. I can understand this not being everybody's cup of tea because once again, it is a weird freaking film, but I love the hell out of it. But yeah, that was my review on House and bye.